So hi guys, I'm Florian P. Bautista and I am for sure BSIT. So today we will discuss the project scope management. So without further ado, let's get started. So PSM or project scope management is the process of ensuring that project work comprises only of work needed to complete the project successfully. The project manager has to keep in mind that there is no gold plating, double check that no extra work has been added in order to see what is in and what is out of the project. Manager evaluates requirements against the business case and then ranks and prioritize them. So basically, managing the project scope is primarily concerned with defining and controlling what is in and what is not included in the project. Yeah, next one. So here's the example of project scope management plan. So plan scope management, um, this is where we largely focus on how to plan the scope management activities or project. Um, collect requirements, the process of determining, documenting, and managing stakeholder needs and requirements to meet their project that objectives. Um, this is the definitely one of the important process where we reach out the stakeholders or to stakeholders to identify their needs and requirements based on the requirements that we have gathered. Next one, um, define scope. The process of developing a detailed description of the project and product. Um, we define scope and we ensure that whatever it is defined in the scope, you only work on those items and not something which is not the part of the scope. Next, um, create VBS. So VBS, the process of subdividing project deliverables and project into smaller, more manageable components. So creating VBS process certainly give us an idea about what are the low level activities, task packages, work packages that we have to work a pound. So creating of VBS is definitely one of the important process within the scope management that we have. Next one, validate scope. The process of formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverables. Um, validate scope against the acceptance criteria that is defined between you and the customer for each deliverables that, that you are producing by the end of each phase in the project like cycle. It's important to define very clearly the acceptance criteria and then lastly we have the control scope. Um, the process of con monitoring the status of the project and product scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. So control scope, um, this is where basically see how do we control effectively the changes that might happen to the scope management plan and how do we go about managing these changes. Yeah, next one. So project scope management has three process. So we have planning here, controlling and closing. So planning, um, planning the project is defined and the work or process needed to deliver the project is determined. So we basically need to do planning and this is exactly to try to understand how we are planning to do our project. So we will basically understand. So after we plan here and making sure that the project we're doing is okay, we need to control. And this is controlling. Controlling involves tracking, managing, and monitoring the progress of project including tracking documentation, scope creep, tracking the work during each phase and disapproving or approving any changes along the way. So as you can see, controlling is the most critical process because in this phase you will face changes and change is inevitable. So to make your project work, you need to do anything like tracking, managing, and monitoring, and so on, and so forth. To make your project great and work. And the last process is the closing. So this is the wrap up of the process, which involves an audit of the project deliverables and accessing the results of the final product against the original defined plan. Next slide. So scope planning, so the purpose of scope 
planning is to ensure that all the required work and the only required work is clearly identified, that the deliverables and outcomes are documented, and that the boundary conditions are adequately defined to complete the project successfully. Scope planning involves identifying the goals, objective, task, resource, budget, and timeline. Next slide. Scope management plan. A scope management plan is a bunch of process that are in place to make sure that the project includes all the necessary tasks for a successful project. The scope management plan is primarily concerned with defining how the scope is explained, developed, structured, and verified. Yeah, so the next one. So the next one is the VBS I mentioned it earlier if you're paying attention. So it's one of example of project scope management plan as I said earlier. VBS is definitely one of the important process within the scope management. So in the next morning slide I will discuss why VBS is a must have in a project scope management. So we are here we are. Um in a VBS the deliverable can be an object a service or an activity by focusing on deliverables rather than methods the what not the how a work breakdown structures helps elim eliminate unnecessary work to get the intended result a well thought out vbs aids in scheduling estimating costs and determining risks it is usually a visual chart or diagram that spell out a project's timeline and process while capturing each task subtask and deliverable that will be created and executed throughout. It's often rendered as an outline, like a table of contents, but can be organized using tabs or other visual organizational system. Yeah, next one. So there are rules to create VBS. First one. Include 100 per second work necessary to complete the goal. Don't account for any amount of work twice. Focus on outcomes, not actions. Next one, a work package should take no less than 8 hours and no more than 80 hours of effort. Next, um, include about 3 levels of detail. And the last one, assign each work package to a specific team or individual. And next one. In this one, or in this slide, we will talk about the importance of VBS in a project management. The first one is estimate the cost of project. Second one, establish dependencies. Third one, determine a project timeline and, and develops a schedule. Next one, write a step in statement of work or SOW. Assign responsibilities and clarify roles. Track the progress of project, identify risk, and the last one is all of these benefits necessarily. So after we discuss about the rules and importance of VBS, we will go to creating a VBS. First step is record the overarching objective you are trying to accomplish. This objective could be anything from developing a new software feature to building a missile. Next one, divide the overarching project into smaller and smaller pieces but stop before you get to the point of listing out every action that must be taken. Remember to focus on concrete deliverables rather than actions. Next one, um, depending on the nature of your project, start dividing by project paces specific large deliverables of subtas so yeah so there are this is our the example of VBS or work breakdown structure uh, and we have here the yard project VBS so as you can see we have the five main tasks on the yard project and they have subtasks which make and the project run smoothly because you know what to do for each task. So, yeah. Scope verification. 
Um, it's the process of formalizing acceptance of the project scope by the stakeholders. Um, it requires reviewing work products and results to ensure that all were completed correctly and satisfactorily. Scope verification occurs at the end of each project phase and as a part of the project closeout process, scope verification is concerned with stakeholder acceptance of the work. Work is sometimes denied and must be reworked. So, scope verification um, ensuring that the deliverables in the project creates are alignment within the project scope. Or, in other words, um, scope verification measure the accuracy of the work up to the cancellation, not the work that was to be completed after project termination. Next one. Scope control. Um, scope control or control scope is a process which is probably one of the most con crucial in maintaining the scope baseline and changes the scope baseline whenever necessary. The project managers will mainly look to avoid the scope creep, which is a process where the scope is expanded in an uncontrolled manner. Control scope is a process of monitoring the status of the project and the project scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. The control scope is a process which allows the scope baseline to maintain throughout the life cycle of the project. And so next one. So here are the steps for control scope process. Uh, measure the performance against the scope baseline. Second one, determine the magnitude of variances. Third one, decide whether corrective preventive action is needed. Next, update the scope baseline, project management plan, or project documents. Next, impact of changes should be evaluated. So, software to assist project management. So, I searched so many software, but I see this one software to assist the project management, and this is a baseline or Basecamp. So, Basecamp is a popular project management software that is widely used by many project management teams. This software offers several different collaborations features such as a designated discussion area where users can leave behind comments. Additionally, a recap of the project your team is working, including statuses and updates, is sent also on a daily basis to your email. Um, users can contribute to discussions via email as well. If you are unable to find a particular item, you can make use of the software powerful search tool to locate files or conversation. Um, short, some shortcomings, however, include the lack of milestones and customiz customization options as well as the inability to add an estimated duration for a task or assign it to more than one user. So, this is the base camp, so you can search it on your browser if you want. So th that is it, and this is the my report for the project management process. So hope you understand, and and that is so. Thank you, and God bless.